Jason. Hey, Jay. Happy Christmas. Hi, guys. How are you? I'm oh, good, thank you, Andy. Are you excited about the Christmas party, Jason? I'm excited. He loves Christmas. I'm not holding myself back. Right? Can you tell by the decorations he has in his house? Are you excited that I'm here? Oh, again, I'm holding myself back. You're, like You're not dressed very Christmassy, Jason. This is Christmas. Sir. No, that's like, no, come on. Right. It's not a summer wedding, it's a Christmas party. Come in. Sorry, no. What is it? Christmas pudding. Christmas, you're a Christmas pudding. Thank you very much. Hold that, this is how this is this is how you do a Christmas outfit. Um, I'm watching you and you just sit like that across the pond. Yeah. Oh, work it, work it. Do you think I'm gonna pull tonight? No. <laughs> <laughs> you're not using that. Come here. No. Come here. No. Just come here. What, you're taking a label off? <laughs> come here. Come here. <laughs> come here, just don't stop trembling. Don't move. What are you doing? Just. Oh, that's really stupid. Don't that's move. really stupid, Jason. Don't, don't use a cleaver. You're just. Re... It's just. No, don't do that. Just stand still. I'm standing still. Stop it. I must have blunted it. This is my noose and monkey jacket. It was your label. noose and monkey jacket. Careful. Careful. Ah. Have you just snipped my jacket? I was hitting your hands, but those there's no feeling. Mm. I have very sensitive feelings, actually. Oh, you've not, I hope you've not snipped my jacket. Oh, will you shut up, Mum? I'll cut your hand off in a minute. Alright, Cleo. Right, are we off? We're fit. We're fit, let's go. It's only the second time I've really seen you, isn't it, since we were in the house? Yeah, it must be now. Yeah, it's been a while, five months. <laughs> Can we actually just start like that? It's so good to see you. Thank you, mate, honestly. How are you? I'm good. Yeah, very good, you? Yeah, I'm alright. It's hard work, isn't it, getting used to being kind of a normal human being again. How did you um, get used to being in the outside world again? Did you find that you had a bit of Stockholm Syndrome? No. All I wanted to do was get out those doors. You feel so confined when you're in there. I'd imagine like being in prison or being in a hospital bed and you can't go nowhere. All you want to do is just step outside. It took a huge amount out of us. I lost about two stone. You lost two stone. about that too, didn't you? Mind you, you had more to lose. In muscle, I mean. I'd run out of clothes because yeah. my clothes didn't fit me no more. All the shirts, all the new shirts I bought in didn't fit. Um, one suit fitted, that's why on every eviction night I wore the same suit. It's funny, I was fit in I remember one time, it was right near the end, and I woke up and I heard your breathing, and it was like this. <gasps> I thought at first, Jason's having a good time, and then I realised... Good time on my own. <laughs> and then I realised, who else are you going to have it with? Um, and then I realised, no, that's, that's Jason's having a... Well, it sounded like a pa as someone who's had panic attacks, that's what it sounded like to me. And the next morning, do you remember, you couldn't talk. I, I actually didn't know I'd had a panic attack. Yeah. And that's and because I got called into the diary room literally within half hour waking up and I couldn't catch my breath, I couldn't talk and it turned out they'd been watching me for a couple of hours and I'd actually had a attack in sleep. Do you remember though afterwards you walked to the shower and you were like, you're a zombie Jason, I couldn't get any sense out of you. I think that was a point when you were the closest you'd come to actually properly being broken by it, to be honest. Yeah, I, if it had gone on another couple of weeks, I don't know if I would have lasted. It, it took a lot out of me. I just didn't know what to expect. My body was shutting down. My mouth was bleeding. But I don't actually regret it now coming out of it. It's an experience you look back on that not many people do. You came first out of everyone. That's quite a big achievement. Is that something you're proud of now? Of course you're going to be proud. You know, to go and win anything, you're going to be proud. Um, yeah, fantastic. It's, it, it's just the whole thing. The whole bubble you put into, the whole experience. It's, um, you've got to look back and go, thank you. you know, that was amazing. However you've come out of it, however you come out of it, how you are perceived. So if you come out of it badly, it's your own fault. Well, that's a big question people ask. And I have spoken to people who are in the house with us and people who are in the house before, and there's this big debate about, oh, I was edited to look like that. Or I was edited to look like that. And I always say, I don't think you're edited to look one way or the other. What they say to you before you go in, nothing is scripted. Nothing whatsoever is scripted. If you're an arsehole, you're going to be edited as an arsehole. If you're a nice person, you'll be edited as a nice person. How people want to perceive that on the outside, some people might think being an arse is funny and great. 
and that's their own perception of it. Yeah. But how you are as an actual person is how you will come across. Not everyone was glad you won, and not everyone understood it. And there was a lot of that going on afterwards. Oh, it was a fix, or there was some kind of, you know, oh, cheating was going on, or this, that, or the other. How have you dealt with that, and what's your answer to it? Ignore it. You just ignore it? Don't answer it, don't reply to it. Ignore any negative comment. If, if, you, if you reply to something, right, if you reply to a negative comment, be it your wife, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, if they say something negative, and you come back at them, it just carries it on. It goes on and on and on. Mm. I've ignored everything. And to be honest, it hasn't been a lot. It's only been a fan base of other people in the house that they thought should have won, that these fans should have thought that other person should have won. But everyone, you're not going to please everyone. We're going to get drowned in a minute. Ah! We'll move up. Almost got drowned. So what have you done with the money? Uh, looked after my dad. Uh, I've done a few bits and pieces, but I've still got majority of it. Have you? You've yeah. not splashed it all? No, I haven't spent it. No, a lot of the stuff I've been doing recently with the charity events and the events that I go to, it's not like you're, you're laying out all the time money-wise, so I'm not spending because I'm going out, I'm not being flashed with it, I haven't had a holiday yet. Since you've left, what's, uh, what's Jason's love life like? Still single. Still single? Um, I've had a few dates when I come out of the house. Um, seen some old friends, seen some new friends. Um, nothing's really changed. What's that like, going on dates afterwards? No different to what it was before. Really? I don't believe that, Jason. It's That's not. nonsense. Of course it's different. How? Of course it's different. You still go to the same they've seen you on television. You still go to the same, you still go to the same restaurant. But how you go to the same places. You still talk to them exactly the same. You don't treat anyone any differently. The women you've dated in the past and the women you're dating now all kind of... They look, they're kind of, uh, what's the term, like wags. Big, beautiful hair, beautiful bodies, well endowed but what in people? the chest area. I mean, is that, is, that, is that what she has to be before you'll date her? What people look like and what or Can you date a normal woman? What people look like and what they're like underneath can be two different things. True. And, and if you're saying that a girl that you're saying has got maybe some faintness going on is not a real woman, I'm not woman, saying that, Jason. You're just, putting words you in just, my mouth. As you just said it. No. Then, um, that that being correct. You can't you can't take for everyone on face value. Well, then equally, then a woman well, who liked you maybe who was more every day in the way she looks would have a chance, would she? Of course. Of getting a date with Jason. Of course. She doesn't have to have gone under the knife or. Not in the slightest. No. No. Not at all. You're looking for love. I want to settle down, yeah. I've wanted to settle down for the past few years. You know, a bit out of the how bad things have gone. Um, yeah, time's come to, like, slow down a little bit and um, enjoy things with one person. You're not, like... People could be forgiven for thinking, oh, maybe Jason's a bit of a playboy. So, so technically, do I need to change my clothes and change my car? I don't know. To, for people to perceive me differently, I'll still be the same person underneath. Yes, you do, no, Jason. No you need a Volvo them. and a cardigan. Uh, you need to put on about four stone. <laughs> Mate, I didn't win, big brother. I can't even afford oh, a Volvo God. and a cardigan. Um, no. You don't have to change anything about you. What I'm saying is that people might have the wrong perception of you. And they might not approach you because they think, well, because I don't look like, you know, a cross between Pamela Anderson and a Barbie doll, I'm not going to get a date with him. And they would be wrong. Totally. Of course they'd be wrong. What do you long for in a relationship you think that's missing from my life? To be honest, I don't know. I've never lived with anyone. I've never settled down, never been engaged, never been married. So I actually don't know what I'm missing. What's your longest relationship then? Eight years. Eight years? That's not bad. Yeah. So uh, I don't actually know what I'm missing, but I know that I haven't experienced everything. What's next for you anyway? I'm doing a lot of charity work, which is great. You know, to, to be able to put your name to something and a little bit of time which can help other people, be it animals or children and stuff like that, it's fantastic. I'm filming at the moment in London and Paris. I'm in LA in January, February, uh, with a new film called Serpent. Cool. Um, we should help, and I've got colour. Serpent? Serpent. That's not one of those films, is it? No, it's not one of those films. You sure? I, I promise you. <laughs> Have you read the script? Cleo's getting a bit wet, isn't she? Where is Cleo? Cleo's oh, over there. there. We need to take her back in. Lovely to see you. Uh, lovely to see you too. Ah! 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 Ah!